Hey folks, welcome back to Gaming Garbage, where we take a look at games, chat about the gaming news in the industry, and of course stream for fun. Of course, as always, you can always take uh, time, if you're watching this on YouTube, to actually put the speed at 1.25 times, to kind of speed it up a little bit, as this is kind of going to be a longer one. Um, and two, also with Gaming News, I'm also going to be doing my review of the Game Awards. Um... These should both be released on the same day, so you can go ahead and take a look for that, too. Uh, but today for gaming news, I'm going to talk about GTA 6. Seems like we found the leaker. Uh, we're also going to be talking about Capcom a little bit. It takes two interactive. Blizzard, along with Unity again. It, boy, they just can't stay out of the news to save their life. We're going to talk some about some good news, actually, with Sega. Um, and then... Uh, a uh, horrible possibility with Bungie. Uh, some skin updates on Overwatch 2, is that's really not getting better. And then some survey data on kids on what they wanted for Christmas. And that will make sense uh, on why I'm talking about this uh, when I get there. So, let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Uh, boy, we got some storms coming through the United States, like in Texas and over in the Northeast a little bit. Just be aware of the weather and stuff and prepare like you should. Um, and then too, yeah, if, uh, boy, if you're just tired, uh, just take time to rest here. You know, just take a breather. You're honestly not alone. And, uh, you know, find other people that are local, um, to just try to hang with and, uh, you know, stick together out there. So, GTA 6, we're gonna get to this first. GTA 6, you know, they've had some leaks already, um, but they also had someone that leaked already the trailer, and so they're like, well, we might as well just put this out here ahead of time anyway. So we got the GTA 6 trailer, which has an unbelievable amount of views. This is going to be a huge game uh, when it comes out. The sales will be tremendous for Rockstar. Congratulations for them. But they think they finally found the guy that's been leaking more information. Um, and this has been multiple leaks on an account on TikTok. And they finally traced it. Uh -huh. To a location and it's coming from one of the homes of the developers and this is uh this is really flipping bad so this developer works from home and come to find out it looks like it's his son Ooh, this is bad so we know that there's been some video about the actual map itself um and a, a little bit of the the map and and like a, a highway we've also seen other pictures uh, and some other postings uh, talking about like the size of the world, um, certain aspects of of the game, um, and uh, I haven't seen, I've only seen one of these, uh, the others I haven't seen myself, but uh, looks like they found the guy. So the son has been taking pictures and been taking some video while his dad is away, uh, you know, grabbing a sandwich or something. And honestly, it's the responsibility of the employee to make sure that their workstation is secure, especially when there's NDA stuff. And usually there's zero tolerance for that, which has been confirmed, of course, by Rockstar that there is zero tolerance in the past. Um, but this is kind of an interesting case. So we'll see what they do here. But the son has said, too, that he's also had friends over, friend or friends. And so um, the, quote, the son is blaming the friend slash friends for these leaks, but all of the data is basically on one particular account on TikTok that is related to the sun. So it's probably the sun doing this. Um, and, you know, some people think like, oh, well, maybe Rockstar will go easy. Honestly, we don't know. Again, it's a zero tolerance policy for any of us that have actually worked for a company, you know, kind of more of a corporate company. There's really not a lot of leeway there. And the rules are what they are. And, um, you know, this guy could honestly lose his job uh, because ultimately it's his responsibility to keep his work secure. And, you know, like if I was in a business where, you know, I had credit card information uh, or other information that's sensitive, like social security numbers or something, and someone else at work, an employee or a delivery guy or something like that was able to swipe that information off of my computer, I would be liable for it. And so simply the age of the of the uh, person leaking this information really doesn't change that dynamic you know we think it's because it's a kid oh he's just dumb he's stupid you know he doesn't really know what he's doing or maybe even realize he's putting his dad's job at risk um severely at risk um but yeah 
we don't really know what's going to happen with this. Um, <laughs> let me know if you've seen any of these TikToks. I personally don't have any TikTok. Uh, I don't have TikTok myself. But yeah, this is just very interesting. And I really hope the dad doesn't lose his job or get demoted or anything. Because to lose your job right around Christmas would be horrible. But again, Rockstar does have a zero tolerance policy for leaks. So we know that leakers have to be really careful with how they do this. They usually cover their tracks with multiple accounts and other aliases and whatever. It's, it usually has to be pretty involved. But this is a reminder too for any of you that are in the digital space or work on a computer. Ultimately, it's your workstation and you got to be responsible for it. And the company will hold you accountable to it. So I know it's annoying, but yeah, make sure you're putting your computer to sleep when you leave to go for a break or whatever or make sure you log out of stuff don't leave stuff up uh, because you're creating the opportunity um, for theft or for leaking information and yeah you are liable for that so yeah we'll see what happens also, uh, Capcom has talked about how successful Resident Evil 4 has been, and it's been so successful that they're going to continue to make remastered Resident Evil games. So we don't know which ones these are, but I'm sure we'll um, hear probably more next year about what some of these games are going to be. Take-Two Interactive is being sued <laughs> for uh, their digital currency, believe it or not. More like the practice of their digital currency. So the suit is because the currency can't be transferred between games, and it's also lost on older games when the servers are taken offline. So the suit is, and this is class action, by the way, starting in California. So the suit is seen as theft from consumers is because, let's say, you know, as most things, you don't have enough. Uh, there, there aren't equal amounts to buy items like in the Game Pass or in the store. And so you have to pay more currency than you normally need to be able to, to buy an item and then you have some left over. Um, well, it's an issue that you can't actually transfer this currency like between seasons or even between games. And with games like NBA 2K or NHL 2K or others that they make or even like with EA with Madden and stuff, it's like, are you actually able to transfer the leftover money that you paid for uh, to next games? You know, because they literally come out in just 12 months anyway. And so, yeah, they're being sued over this. Um, again, there's no confirmation on this. This is just being filed. Um, but So, yeah, this hasn't taken place yet. But 2K also doesn't allow refunds. And so they're not refunded. They're not compensated. There's also no notification uh, talking about the terms and conditions that if they buy currency, it's going to, like, stay with the game. Or, of course, if this, currency, if this game goes offline someday, they're going to lose their currency. There's none of that either. And so, uh, and then also no transfer of currencies to the next game. So yeah, it is a way just to take your money, but they don't tell you that you're just, they're just taking your money. And so, um, hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully this, uh, along with Take-Two, uh, other companies do this as well. Some companies do allow transfers of your currency anyway, uh, or they will roll over like into the next season or into the next game with some of these live service games. Um, but we know that ultimately the live service is just a fancy way of taking your money anyway. Um, now this isn't necessarily, this does not relate to skins, but I do think this could relate to content in the future. Is because if you pay money for skins, if you pay money for certain game modes or for certain kind of quests or whatever, like in Destiny 2, and then they take it away from you at, at some given time, is that still theft? Personally, I think it is. That's one of the biggest reasons why I quit playing Destiny in the first place and haven't gone back. Um, but one of the issues was just like their microtransactions were just getting so crazy and it was starting to become pay to win. Um, and then the, uh, the DLC drops weren't as good either or as big. And it's just like, man, I just can't support this anymore. And now Destiny 2 is at a point where they've lost 45% of revenue after all of the stimulus money being gone. And other companies are trying to find other ways, too, to get as much money as they can, to try to milk stuff as long as they can. And this is one of the ways with the currency finagling, scamming, of just uh, just trying to get you to pay more, pay more than you really need. And then basically, it's kind of like buying a gift card you never use. You know, they just got free money. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of trash. And so, is this eventually going to get to future content? I kind of hope it does... Um, because, like, there's other skins in the game that you can't transfer over. Um, there's other packages, too, with, like, 
sports games and then the next game comes out and it's all just non-existent it's not transferable in any way destiny 2 we already talked about and then also it brings up the thing of um overwatch 2 cancellation of hero content so if you buy a game hoping for something and then they cancel stuff uh well now it definitely deteriorates the value of the game that you paid for um or relates to the reason why you bought it in the first place and now you're not getting that content is that also theft so i think this is is possible to open the door honestly i hope it does because i'm so tired of live service crap um and uh and this i think would even bring into question you know is um pricing a full release game that came from dlc is that also theft or scamming or fraud or whatever because we can look at modern warfare 3 and there isn't a single person that says modern warfare 3 is great i mean it literally has the lowest score on record of any call of duty game it's one of the lowest rated games ever in the history of metacritic steam and other platforms and uh you know just when we think can't think it can't get any worse you know hold my beer <laughs> there's another one that comes flying by and uh and beats the record and uh yeah so hopefully this lawsuit will really bloom into some other stuff and we can start having a more ga uh, fair gaming industry so for blizzard uh they had a survey go out to players that of course play their games and they asked would you pay up to a hundred dollars for dlc and this is related to diablo 4 which they currently have out right now and this would be related to vessel of the hatred which is their next dlc launch um, after their, um, after their, uh, vampire one that they just had, so this would be season three, and, uh, yeah, would you pay a hundred dollars? So they have different, um, amounts of 50, 70, 80, and a hundred dollars, and these bundles, um, would include, of course, like the DLC, uh, skins, some of them would also, the more expensive ones, of course, would include, like, stash space, currencies and even early access and so yeah would you pay a hundred dollars uh per dlc basically per dlc bundle in order to uh get more skins you can't really see because your guy's mini on the screen uh more stash space because hey you need more space to collect that junk and then more currencies uh you know technically at a quote good price better value uh, so that you can buy more stuff that you can't see. <laughs> and then, of course, early access, which they already tried that BS. And their servers didn't work at the launch of the game. And now they want to early access their DLCs on top of that. Every DLC. Like, does that just sound insane? I mean, how much... I wouldn't pay shit. I wouldn't pay anything to have early access. I can wait a few days. It's fine. It's so dumb. And we even talked about this too, where the DLCs and, and or the early access stuff is starting to actually get more expensive. You know, we thought kind of um, Starfield was expensive at $6 a day uh, for five days for 30 bucks, But now we're getting to a point where it's pretty much $10 a day in early access or even more than that. And the, I mean, this is just getting ridiculous, folks. I really hate early access. It's a joke. But yeah, would you guys pay for this? For any game. Let's say it's your just favorite game of the world, 100% biased toward it, which is fine. But, I mean, would you pay 100 bucks for a DLC with some stash space, early access, and some skins? Every DLC. I mean, think of that, folks. Would you pay 300 or 400 bucks a year? <laughs> Could you afford it? Honestly, don't know. Uh, another issue that the devs brought up before with this stash space problem and why they didn't provide it in the game is because, quote, the game is coded to load stash tabs for other players that you play with. And so the devs, they've said that they can't add it because it would make the game more unstable. Basically, it could crash the game. But here they're willing to put it in DLC bundles uh, so that you can pay for it. Isn't that nice? So yeah, they're just, in my opinion, they're just going back on their word. They want as much as they can get. And so now we're at a point now with Diablo where you're paying for the game, 70 bucks. 
You're paying for DLCs. You're paying for the battle passes. You're paying for skins, the bundles of currencies and everything else. You're paying for stash space. And you can also pay for currencies individually. It's just insane. It's just insane. I mean, they're literally not even... We're not even paying for games anymore, folks. I don't even know really what we're paying for anymore. I mean, this this stuff might as well be NFT most of the time. Uh, but yeah, it really just kind of seems worthless. Because your battle pass doesn't give you much. Your skins don't give you much. Your stash space, well, they're basically selling you storage space now, which is stupid. Uh, and then the game and the DLCs actually have content in them. Uh... And then you got the currencies, too, to buy all the worthless stuff you don't need. And yeah, at some point, at some point, like, we just gotta say no. Because, yeah, this is getting depressing. And really, Diablo 4 is becoming Diablo Immortal, the free-to-play game on mobile, if, if it already isn't there already. And they want to continue to push it this way, and it's not just them. We're seeing this with Call of Duty, we're seeing this with Overwatch, we're seeing this with... Uh, all sports games. It is just getting insane. So yeah, where's your line in the sand? W for me personally, we already crossed it a long time ago. Like, well before COVID. Because uh, if you ask my friends that, I'll be, I've been ranting about this stuff for a while. So on to Unity. So, they're firing some more employees. Big surprise there. Uh, they already had some damage with their... Um, retrograde, um, kind of, uh, whatever you would call that, game installs. So, it's not as bad as it started, but, you know, it was ten steps forward, nine steps back. Uh, but, uh, we know that Unity bought, uh, Weta Digital for $1.6 billion back in 2021. And Weta is used as kind of like a game engine, basically, and they have certain technologies to be able to make things um, and uh, and render things and stuff like that. And they, they're very good at it. Uh, if you want to know something that they did recently, you can take a look at um, Avatar 2, Way of Water. And that's basically rendered and made it with Weta Digital Technology. And it is very, very good. It looks great. Uh, so Unity bought Weta Digital. There are Weta... There are other Weta companies. Um... But uh, Unity is going to fire 600, excuse me, 265 out of the 275. So they're just going to leave 10 employees uh, out of Weta Digital, and they're basically going to fire the rest of the people. Um, Weta FX, another company, has said that they will hire back those employees. Don't know how many, hopefully all of them. And then Unity will basically get to keep the tech. And Weta FX will be able to use the tech too. So basically, Uni Unity paid for Weta Digital, so they can ultimately get the technology, be able to use it with their own engines, uh, for $1.6 billion. And then they just want to fire everybody. Man, I gotta tell you, if I was making stuff in Unity, I wouldn't make stuff in Unity anymore. There's other engines, there's other types of tools out there, I would build it in something else. Because, man, Unity is just getting brutal. So, on to Sega. We know, too, that uh, Sega owns Creative Assembly. They've made a lot of the Total War games for PC and stuff, and they do actually a pretty damn good job. Uh, but, luckily, they've now said that a Creative Assembly will now return to making RTS games. Because, for those of you that don't know, Creative Assembly worked on making Hyenas, uh, which was cancelled. So first it was supposed to be a premium release, which wasn't going very good. They're like, hey, we can at least save it, make it a free-to-play game, maybe get some money off of that, then eventually just grind it into the dust for uh, after a couple of years, maybe. But even that wasn't working. Literally, Sega took a look at what was going on with Hyenas, and they're like, look, we can't even sell this. Which I wish more companies would actually do that, because then we wouldn't get Gollum and Forspoken and um, Redfall and Modern Warfare 3. Companies would be like, nope, this is trash. Uh, we're not going to sell that to people because that's fraud. Uh, but at least, you know, Sega was able to do that with Hyenas. Uh, but Hyenas cost $110 million uh, for the current pro uh, progress they had made on the game, which is crazy. And uh, 
Sega confirmed that Hyenas as a project was part of the COVID live service hype. They saw that a lot of other companies, a lot of other live service games were making tons of money. Again, the stimulus folks. And uh, they wanted a piece of that action, but it's a little too late. And uh, also the development was just going very, very poorly. And so I'm glad they canceled it. But again, you know, that's a $110 million mistake. Uh, that's quite a bit. And so Creative Assembly is going to go back to making their Total War games, which is great. That's what they should be doing in the first place. And they've been making those games uh, for quite some time, since like the 80s. So they've been around a long, long time. And, you know, I'm not against companies trying to branch out and make something else. Uh, but then again, it's like, look, if your team knows how to make something well, uh, don't have the entire team switch to something that they've never made before. This is what actually happened with Arcane Studios with Redfall. It's like, well... Uh, we can try to make this, but, uh, <laughs> we're going to release this anyway. And Redfall was uh, just an absolute joke. If you're curious, uh, I do have a video backlogged in the state of gaming, I think, or maybe gaming reviews. Uh, it's in one of my big playlists somewhere on YouTube at Gaming Garbage 22. But yeah, it was honestly pretty pitiful. I mean, still a lot of bugs, not a lot of enemies. And, uh, you know, I think it's dangerous when the equation changes for the devs because the devs don't know how to make that type of stuff. And maybe it would be fun to try to make something else, but you shouldn't have your entire team try to make something else that they've never made before. It's just a recipe for disaster. So the Game Awards. Again, um, I am going to have my own video on this. I'm going to do the Game Awards right after I do the news here. Uh, but boy, do I have a lot to say on the Game Awards. So, stay tuned. Uh, look for that video today, by the way, because uh, it'll be up. Next is Bungie. Uh, so, the news on Bungie is that they could actually get dissolved uh, into Sony. And the reason is because some, some conditions have to happen, uh, but they're getting there. Uh, and I'm going to set this all up for you. So, the deal that was made between Sony and Bungie when Sony bought them was that if the revenue fell enough from Bungie with Destiny is that Sony could actually fire the entire board at Bungie and then take control directly and then mold them into whatever they wanted. And so, and one of the one of the ways uh, in those terms is that they could absolutely dissolve Bungie and just mold them in as support groups for other projects that Sony has. Which that would be crazy. I mean, this is the studio that originated Halo. And... I don't think Bungie is doing very good uh, under Sony. <laughs> I mean, they were already on the wrong path anyway. Uh, but, but when Bungie went independent from Microsoft, uh, oops, I think I think we can see now in hindsight uh, that that was uh, not the best decision because they got into this whole microtransaction thing. Destiny 1, I actually enjoyed. Uh, toward the end of Destiny 1, it was getting kind of ridiculous with the microtransactions, but we would kill to have the those type of microtransactions today compared to where Destiny 2 is right now. And uh, it's just totally gotten out of control. And so, yeah, we'll see. We, we know already that Destiny 2 this year has lost 45% of its revenue, which is a ton. Uh, that's really not sustainable. And then the current lineup isn't very good. We know that the final shape is delayed about uh it was delayed about five months and we also know that marathon is delayed about a year and a half and so uh revenue is not going to be coming very quickly for these folks and then after the final shape we have two years of just basically season updates that are going to be a little bigger and probably also cost a little more um per uh per season but they're probably got, not going to make a ton of money from that either because, yeah, once the final shape over is over, it's like, well, that's kind of the story. That's it. What's the point? And they still plan to keep Destiny 2 alive for two years? Mm -mm. Nope. I don't think that's going to happen, folks. Because if if someone tells you that, uh, you know, you can get a, a four-course meal uh, with a full dessert, um, and the next time you come in, it's just going to be some appetizers... And a candy and a fun sized candy bar, you're gonna be like, no, that's stupid. I'm gonna go somewhere else. And that's exactly what I feel like Bungie is gonna be serving up after the final shape. 
and then marathons delayed on top of it. So again, there's not going to be a ton of revenue coming in. And if revenues continue to fall, which I imagine they will, will eventually Sony just be like, look, Bungie, you're done. You're flipping done. And Sony has already forced the um, destruction or cancellation of several studios already. And uh, they've already also already laid off quite a few people. Bungie has already lost 8% of their workforce. Um... So yeah, clock's ticking, Bungie. And honestly, with the parameters that Bungie has, I don't know if they can make Sony happy uh, with what's been going on. So yeah, I think, I think Bungie is ultimately kind of screwed. If there's not some freaking miracle, I think Bungie is uh, going to be done in maybe a few months from now, maybe a few years from now. But, uh, but yeah, I think Sony is eventually going to take over. And good golly. Uh, I wish him luck. Also with Overwatch 2. So we haven't talked about them for a little bit, though they always kind of seem to make it in the news somehow. We now have a buy-in event uh, that is basically has content in it. So it's basically another season pass or battle pass. And, uh, and this is on top of the normal season pass that's already in the game. So now you have the opportunity to buy two season passes at the same time. Uh, and also they have some timed skins in there to try to help create rarity. It's like, oh, well, this skin is available for a few days or maybe a week. Uh, so hurry up and make your decision. And this is a mobile game trick. We see this in a lot of free-to-play mobile games. Is like there's kind of timed exclusive stuff that's, of course, better, right? And if you actually pay for it, it's basically pay to win, you know, um, if it's PvP and stuff like that. I mean, we see this in, like, World of Tanks Blitz. Uh, we see this in, like, uh, Call of Duty Mobile, and, uh, yeah, it's just basically a mobile game trick, and we see this, too, happening more often, is that there's kind of more mobile game-like things, like what we just talked about in, um, Diablo 4, is, like, some of these kind of mobile game aspects or business models are just being further implemented into full games, and I remember people... I'm pooping on these people right now, folks. I remember people saying, oh, well, it's a mobile game. They're not going to do that to the actual game on console or PC. And it's like, man, you mother hubbards, you just freaking wait. And sure enough, here it comes, man. It's just, And it just continues to get worse. It's unreal. Again, Diablo 4, I mean, you're paying for... Let me look here. Uh, you're paying for the base game, the skins, the stash base, the currencies, the early access, the battle pass, the bundles. I mean, at some point in the DLCs. I mean, when does this stop? Even your freaking horsey armor, right? And then they're lying to you on top of it, saying that things are actually improved or actually look different. No. no. Or, or saying that they can't do it, which is a total lie. Like the stash base. Oh, we can't put that in there because it's going to mess up the game. And now you can pay for it. What a bunch of hooey, folks. A bunch of trash. And so back with Overwatch 2. So yeah, some of these skins have timed rarity. Some of these skins, too, are starting to look the same. <laughs> and that also becomes a problem. It's like, there's only so many colors. There's only so many types of, or numbers of accents you can have coupled with the primary color of something. There's only so many textures that you have available to you. Eventually, stuff, when you do it long enough, kind of starts to look the same on your character. And so they're starting to get into this problem. Is that there's really not a point for grinding some of these out, or actually buying all of the different types that you can get, like the Mythic Armor, armor sets. Uh, because, yeah, it kind of looks the same. So we're starting to see that, too. Also, the amount of content available in Battle Passes is seemingly starting to get less and less and less as stuff comes out this year. And people are starting to notice that as well. And honestly, you can't really blame them uh, because the devs have a nine-week window to create more stuff. And so, yeah, at some point it's like, eh, eh let's just make this uh, light blue, splash in some other colors, and we'll add a, uh, a, a different uh, highlight here on the shoulder. And ta-da, new armor. I mean, at, at some point, you got to stop buying textures and colors uh, on your character, folks. It just uh, it just looks stupid. It's like paying, um, you know, charms for your gun. 
that are charms on your bracelet that no one is ever going to see in gameplay. Uh, or even buying just armor sets really for your character in Diablo 4 because your character is so small. You can't see it. The other players don't care. They're wearing their own crap. And, uh, yeah, it's just a fashion show, folks. I mean, you guys that see yourselves as manly and stuff, you guys are paying for a fashion show. Seriously. You kids are paying for fashion. It's hilarious. I wonder if any of you have ever seen it that way, but that's what you're paying for. And yeah, with Overwatch 2, with this free-to-play model, uh, you know, Overwatch 1, you actually had to pay for, and the uh, the developers were actually able to get some money that way, but now it's just a free-to-play model, and so just more skins, more cosmetics. It's just kind of broken the system, and I don't think it's done Blizzard or Overwatch 2 any favors. It's just a real bummer. But it doesn't really seem to matter now anyway, because now you got games like Modern Warfare 3 and Diablo 4 where you just pay for the full game and you got all these other skins and stuff too on top of it. So yeah, it's just getting kind of ridiculous. Lastly, I want to talk about a survey that was done uh, to kids about what they wanted for Christmas. And this is a little concerning because 39% of the kids said they wanted a, a game subscription of some sort. So that's all digital, you know, we know subscriptions are going, kind of taken over anyway. Game Pass, excuse me, Game Pass, in my opinion, is actually actually doing a wonderful job. Um, and uh, they're really starting to create some value with some better quality games lately in the last several months. But the biggest thing for me was finding out what number three was. The second thing was consoles at 38%. And 29% said in-game currencies. Yay. So a third basically wanted in-game currency to buy skins and stuff. Which we've already been talking about is trash. So if you do want to buy something every once in a while, you know, that's fine. But when companies can make money off of skins so you can have your fashion show, uh, it's starting to get ridiculous because now you're playing you know, Ken and Barbie dress up instead of actually paying for a game. And, uh, yeah, if that's the case, we're screwed. I mean, the gaming industry is going to totally tank. Um, and, uh, yeah. I'm just starting to lose hope a little bit, folks. I'm starting to lose it. So, yeah, that's the gaming news for the week. That's uh, December t uh, 4th through the 10th. Uh, let me know what you guys think about any of this. Again, some of this is just crazy, in my opinion. And uh, most of the news every every week is bad, but hey, you guys keep listening. So uh, let me know how I'm doing. Uh, let me know what you think about some of this stuff, or if I missed anything. And also be sure to take a look at the Game Awards video, uh, as that is also coming out same day. So hopefully you guys are doing well. Again, just take some time to enjoy the holidays. I know things can be busy. I know family, too, can be extremely frustrating, and you, you, you know maybe you can't get along with it, but... I have to tell you folks, being older, that family is really important. And if you kind of don't have one, then friends, right? Spend the holidays with somebody. Make the relationships better than they are. And that should be uh, some of your goals, too. And I'm still going to share my goals at the end of the year to hopefully encourage you guys. And so you can stay tuned for that. But work on making up some of your own goals. You guys really should. Because, honestly, if, uh, if you choose to do nothing, then... You're choosing to stand still and not move forward. And all the dreams that you have will stay dreams. So with that, folks, I'll see you guys on the next one.